Hey folks, it's Ray at DCRamRecord.com here, and today I've got a complete unboxing and user interface tour of the new Coros Vertex 2. Now this is not a review video, I've already done that. It's up in the corner up there, 11 new things to know about the Coros Vertex 2. I walked through all the features, all the goodness there, after using it for about a month now, 24 by 7 on all my swim bikes and runs. So tons of details up there. This instead is just a quick unboxing, and then we'll get into a much longer user interface explainer and tour. I'm gonna put the watch here, just go walk through it step by step, all the features, how everything works. It's as simple as that. So with that, let's get into it. Uh, this has completely never been unboxed before. I mean, it's literally still sealed up here. Uh, I have not done this myself, so we're gonna find out how this looks. I've been using this one without a box, so it's kind of the way it works. Okay, on the top here, we got a zipper. Kind of clever, I guess. There we go. And let's see, uh, this is obviously the Chorus Vertex 2. There's only really one, ver different colors, but only one uh, like SKU version at this point. Um, Europe, because it has the maps preloaded for Europe, uh, though you can download maps as you see fit off their site. So, and they're all free. Um, I guess we'll open it this way then. Uh, so, there we go. And inside here, we got uh, the case, it looks like. And it's on the back here. Uh, so, pull this out. I think that's a case or a strap for the case. It's definitely not for the watch. Uh, otherwise, there's nothing else, just a piece of cardboard in the box itself. So we'll put this somewhere clever. There we go, that looks clever. Um, okay, now we got this bottom piece there that's gonna go inside this, I believe. This is a waterproof case, uh, stylized from Koros. Uh, and they did this on the original Vertex as well, having this kind of waterproof fancy case there that you could carry it in, like a carrying case. Uh, so let's do this. Pop it open. Oh, I got it open all the way. Um, so there we go. So you get that situated the right way. Uh, so we have the unit itself, the watch, just like that. Oh, it's a silver one, cool. I've got the black one there, you can see, so it looks a little different, uh, obviously. And then we have the two watch bands, the orange and the black, it's pretty. And below deck here, we got a piece of plastic. We have the charging cable. Uh, we have a user guide. User guide, user guide, it's out. And inside a manual that some paper stuff, stickers, I got stickers, there we go. You're never gonna read any of that stuff, let's be honest, because you've watched my review videos, you know what you know what all the deal is. So I'll put that over here, uh, and then below this, anything else? No, no M&Ms or anything, so. Oh, hey, it's future me from the video, the part where I'm doing the user interface tour, that I tell you lots of information on how it all works, like the how-to, it's exciting. Uh, but more importantly, right now, whack that like button, it really helps out this video and the channel quite a bit. Back to back to the unboxing. So there's this case, put this off the side, uh, and then this little watch deck right there. In here is a charging cable, the same charging cable we've seen in the past from Koro, so it's got a little three-prong uh, connector. Come on out. There we go, uh, and a USB on this side and a little three prong connector right there. Um, so here is the watch, there we go. We'll take off the sticker, put that inside there, and we can snap on these, a uh, bit of like a quick fit style uh, adapter, pops on, and watch, voila. Uh, now, a quick uh, note, hello sticker, a quick note on weight, so we'll weigh this in real quick here and compare it to some other watches. So it's, there we go, zero grams. Okay, uh, so I'm coming in at 80, there we go, 89 grams for that. Uh, in comparison to the Phoenix 6X Solar, which is probably what it compares up against in terms of weight, 83 grams for that. Um, and this is the uh, titanium uh, edition. So power glass, so no sapphire glass on any Garmin solar watches versus sapphire here. Uh, and then compared to the original Vertex 1, this is the Icebreaker Edition, 75 grams. So obviously that's a little bit lighter. Um, now a quick note on the case. I think I'd be remiss. I think, you know, this is like cool to show you unboxing wise, like it makes a great unboxing video. Um, but a lot of people have pointed out uh, in a lot of different places that with the Vertex 1, the case is a waste of just a waste uh, in general. So um, I think I would be remiss if I did not point that out that, you know, you're never gonna use this case again for the most part, because it's a watch, it kind of goes on your wrist. So like a case, I mean, even if we take all the stuff out and you just have this little waterproof, you know, compartment, I guess I can rip that off the top there to put something in, but uh, it's a waste like shipping wise, cost wise, environmentally, all that kind of stuff, because you're not gonna use that. Now, another company did a case as well is their box. Um, GoPro did it for their Hero 9. And uh, in that case, 
this was the entire box. Uh, I think I've got one unboxed. Hold on one second. Nope, didn't, didn't have an unboxed one. Uh, but you can see inside there is they have, you know, it's set up like this. I was looking for the paper sleeve that run, went around it. And GoPro had made a point of being like environmentally everything um, on that. And I think the thing with the GoPro, you put the GoPro inside. So you have all your GoPro stuff there and it's a logical place to store it. Um, but in my case, I just put watches inside. Uh, so this is the handy place for me to store my watches when I'm traveling the last couple weeks. Uh, and in particular, I'm going to pull this one out because this is the Phoenix 6 uh, Pro, but without the X part, uh, just from a weight comparison standpoint, because a lot of folks will compare it against this, both price-wise and weight-wise. There we go. And weight is 81 grams. So with all that said, let's move that out of the way. Uh, let me just clean this up real quick, and we'll get to the user interface side. Okay, so everything's all cleaned up, and this is the watch. Now, I've been using this watch for a month, and as such, there's some minor little nicks and stuff like that. I just use my watches like I use them, like treat them like watches. Like I don't take any special care. So, um, you know, I, it's not perfect, of course. It was titanium bezel, one little minor scratch there. This is the watch face. You can customize watch faces, uh, both on the Coros app, as well as a few watch faces that are preloaded onto the watch itself. Uh, I can scroll down, and this is one of the new areas, the widget glances. Uh, and these widget glances basically take the larger widgets uh, with different information and pull them into it. Uh, and so you can see right now, this is my day's worth of stuff. Uh, now. It, consider, it considers activity a bit more broadly than most. I have not yet done a workout today. I've mostly just sat around doing nothing. Uh, but it says I've got 40 minutes of activity there. Uh, and you can see this over time, looking at that, uh, different hours. And you can pop into each one of these different things. So if I go down to steps, for example, I can look at steps over time. Uh, and you can see the different days there using this scrolling wheel on the side. And that's probably a good time to mention that this is a three button watch, one there, one right there, and then the digital crown, that's also a button that you can press in. Uh, and in certain places, it's also a touch screen as well. Uh, so scrolling through this, um, now one of the things people have said, and it's kind of rightly so, is that the screen can be a bit dark at times. Uh, and so right now I've got this exposed properly, I think for most watches, uh, but you know, it can be a little bit dark. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it as visible as possible uh, from the watch. You can see heart rate and sleep. Uh, since I've got sleep here, I'll just mention this briefly. Um, you know, I found sleep good as long as I didn't wake up. Uh, and so what I found was that the second I woke up and took one step, uh, it would end my sleep. So if I woke up at say 5.30 in the morning because the kid was crying or wouldn't even close, went to the bathroom, whatever, that would end my sleep right then and there. Uh, it gave you a little more leniency in the first couple hours, but after that, it would always end early every single time. Uh, uh, and this is one case where I went the entire night without anyone waking me up. And so therefore, uh, I have got more sleep. Uh, you can see the altitude there. It's a bit low right now. Um, I'm not sure why. I'm in the Netherlands, but it's a little bit lower than it should be. Uh, but so I'm usually like, you know, plus or minus zero on this because where I live, maybe a couple meters below, depending on where I am in the city. Down below, we have temperature here, for example. If I had uh, training plans loading this, I would see them right here. Uh, and I can tap into one of these and again, use digital crown to scroll through it and look at the temperature over time. Uh, and this is pretty cool. I'd say like, I don't generally like the digital crown on Coros's watches. I don't feel like it adds anything in most cases. This is the rare scenario where I think it is kind of uh, handy, but very, very rare scenario. Um, so. There we go, that's the widgets, uh, pretty straightforward. I can then hold this lower right hand button right there into it uh, to get into the toolbox. And the toolbox is where they've kind of stuffed all the stuff that isn't starting a sport and isn't a widget. So you can see there's music right there. We'll go to that in just a second. Camera control, do not disturb enablement, uh, compass, broadcasting heart rate, uh, SpO2, HRV test or the ECG feature as they call it in some places, uh, battery remaining usage, metronome ultramax which is if you really need this battery life like if you're gonna go more than 140 hours then go to ultramax mode otherwise don't ever use this it just reduces your gps and other data recording rates and therefore you get less data uh, so only if you're going more than 140 hours on gps navigation maps uh, save location, satellite signal. Uh, now I can't do this inside in this one. So I'm gonna tap this real quick and then uh, you can see it's not gonna find anything here, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like outdoors using some other footage overlaid. Uh, and this allows you to see all the satellites, including uh, all the new satellites that you can see with the dual frequency option. Uh, and I can also scroll down if I haven't done so already at this point and see the exact satellite count and how many of those are good. Uh, and in Coros's, you know, launch presentation, they showed uh, one person up to 60 satellites, which is an incredible number of satellites uh, and in theory, that means that you get more accurate data. Uh, check out my review though for whether or not that theory actually pans out. Um, so back into the toolbox here, we'll go uh, stopwatch, timer, alarm, watch face, 
night mode, and then back to system. Uh, now, since we're here, we've got music, we'll just do that right now. Uh, so we're gonna tap into the music option on the toolbox. Uh, and now music on the Coros Vertex series is simply loading MP3 files into the watch itself using your computer. So there's no streaming services here. Uh, and as I explained in my review, that's really not gonna happen probably anytime soon. All those streaming services require millions and millions of devices. Uh, even Fitbit doesn't have Spotify offline, for example. So just to put things in perspective at this point. Uh, now, in my case, I've already paired these up uh, under settings and we can swing by that later on, but uh, just like pairing up any other sensor. Uh, and these are just my Beat Studio ones I've been using for the last little while. Uh, so I'll pop these out right there and we'll see if it'll connect to them automatically. Uh, usually it does, sometimes it argues with my phone, but usually not. Uh, and then we'll hit play here. Doesn't seem to want to connect right away, so I'm gonna go manually connect to it. So we'll go back here, we'll go into settings, and it's the same place you would pair with it. Uh, and we'll go to music. You can see the headphone list, I'm just gonna connect now. And there we go, and now it's playing. Now you probably can't hear this. Let me put this up all the way though. There we go, put this next to the mic. Hey, there you go, you can hear it for a second or two. Um, the music control is fairly straightforward. You can see me, I just change the volume there like that. Um, and then you can change, you know, whether or not you want to repeat tracks uh, or go ahead and uh, mix it all up. Uh, you can tap up at the top there and you can scroll through the tracks that you have. There doesn't appear to be any sort of like folder system or album system, et cetera. It just, it's all kind of like one big bucket. Uh, and I can skip tracks as simple as that. Uh, so that's music in a nutshell. This is accessible anytime you're in activity by just simply holding this little right hand button and getting the toolbox and accessing it there. Uh, so we'll go on back here. Uh, I'm going back again and we're going to go to Insta360 control since we're in this whole toolbox jam right now. So move this out of the way. In the case of Insta360, it supports the uh, 1R uh, as well as supporting the 1X2, which is this one right here. Uh, and it also will down the road support the Go2. That's a smaller, the tinier one. Uh, so I'm gonna come power this on. Uh, and this just allows you to go ahead and control the camera. There we go. So Insta360 control, see if we'll connect up to it. There we go. Uh, so it doesn't always work the first time as you can see right there. Uh, so if I go and take a picture, I just tap this and you should see this flash over there. It's loading, take a picture. Obviously since I'm on the camera lens itself, it's a bit hard to like show you both the camera lens. And I mean, you can see it's taking a picture and I can scroll down to video and I can start a video there. And you can see now it's starting to record on this and there's a recording indicator. Uh, and then I can stop it as well just by pressing that button. Uh, pretty straightforward. That's all there is to it. You can't really do anything else, but that's what most people would want to do. They want to switch between those two modes and do that. And now you can do it from the wrist itself. Okay. So we'll tap out of that uh, and go back in the toolbox. And I'm gonna show you the HRV feature right here. Uh, so this is the one that uh, Koros basically calls an ECG in some places and HRV tests in others. Uh, and the way it works is you go to this toolbox op option called HRV test. Uh, and then you tap into it. Uh, now, I'm gonna switch to some different footage of what happens. You take your other wrist and you go ahead and put it on the watch uh, like this. You can see this other footage right now of me doing this. Uh, and then as soon as that's done, it'll go ahead and start doing the test. The test takes 60 seconds and it shows you your ECG uh, wave right there, uh, but it's not gonna record that ECG anywhere. So it's just using that to then get an HRV value at the end. You can see that HRV value now. Uh, and at that point, that records that to the app. Uh, and now this is something that I've, I gave him some flack on in the review video because this is not, it's not the ECG people think of when they think of, you know, wearables like Apple Watch and Samsung and others that have that functionality. Uh, and that's because Coros um, can't get the medical certification, doesn't want to pursue the medical certification, all the hassle that comes with uh, just for that function that, you know, for their user base probably doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, so any case, that is there. Uh, and then if we go back to the toolbox, I think we've covered all the stuff at that point in the toolbox that I'm not going to dive into separately somewhere else. So Let's talk sport modes. Uh, to do this, all we do is tap here this button uh, to go and look at all the sport modes. And you can see all these are here, run, indoor run, trail run, mountain climb. Uh, everything here can then be customized on a per sport mode basis from the smartphone app as well. Uh, so you can go there and most of them allow up to six data pages and then up to eight data fields uh, within a given page. Uh, and so you can choose the different fields that you want uh, based on that. So I'm gonna go down to trail run here uh, just because for the fun of it. Uh, and you can see, let me sit dust off right there. Uh, and you can see I've start or I've settings and along the outside here, it's a bit hard to see, but it's starting to try to acquire a GPS signal. It won't be able to do that inside. Uh, and at the bottom here, you can see it'll try to find the heart rate. That's using the optical heart rate sensor on the back. That's this portion right there. Uh, and this is the charging connector. I put my finger on here for a second. It might be enough just to get it to show green. Here we go. 
There you go. Now you can see that optical heart rate sensor right there. Uh, and then the red light that you would see would be for the pulse oximeter, uh, so the blood oxygen level if I were to enable that option. So we'll go into settings and we'll load up a course. Uh, and so you can see in settings I have activity alert, auto pause, 3D distance, turn on and off. So navigation. I've got a course already preloaded in here. Uh, now in my review, I talk about the process of loading a course. Essentially, you need to take the GPX or FIT file uh, and then save it to your phone and then pull it into the Chorus app. And then from there, it'll sync into your watch. So you can see a couple courses that I have in there. Uh, and then I'm gonna crack this open uh, and I can start the course right away. I can look at the elevation details of this particular trail run that I did. Uh, so you can see it's a lot of ups and downs. I'll throw some B-roll right now of that particular trail run. Lots of fun, uh, good times out there. Uh, I can go back now though, and I can change the start point direction. So if I want to do this course in reverse, I could do that. It's kind of a nice handy thing to have right there. Uh, and then map direction, uh, heading up or north up. Heading up means that the direction of the map will be facing uh, the heading of the watch itself uh, versus north up means it's going to be facing north. Uh, and for my purposes, I always use heading up. The one caveat though with this is that when you raise your wrist on the, this particular firmware version, the production firmware version, uh, it takes like six to eight seconds for it to stabilize. And otherwise it's like rotating around because it's, you know, you're running like this, you raise your wrist and now it thinks it's pointing that way. So the whole course is all cattywampus. Um, Coro says they're working to fix that. Most other brands out there have that figured out where they use your uh, speed, your direction of speed uh, for that initial couple seconds before um, they switch over to the compass. So kind of like, stabilize it it's the way they cheat but it works really well that way um, so there's that and the map style you have a topo map a hybrid map or landscape map uh, so in a topo you're gonna get some top lines on top of that and in landscape you're just gonna get the base map and the, and the base map is going to include essentially all of the green stuff and all the blue stuff in the trail so that's the best way to think about it is if it's uh land it's going to see it and if it's a blue thing like you know water streams oceans ponds etc you're going to see that and if it's a trail or a road you're going to see that you will not see any name zone any of this uh, so in my case i always use hybrid because that's the easiest and then of course deviation alert if you want to get alerted if you're going off course uh, you would i don't know why you'd use this without not having an alert but i guess if you want to turn it off sure um and then go back to start course here uh, i'm going to ignore the gps warning and there you can see uh the actual there we go the route along the, the coastline right there uh and then you can see my position there the word start point of things it has a satellite because i'm not in, outside so there's no satellite uh, coverage i can tap though now and you can see when i tap it opened up this little uh plus and minus there this allows me to zoom in or zoom out so if i do this it'll go zoom in zoom in again zoom in again uh, and now at this point i can use a touch screen to move around so you can see i can go like this and move around and this is super handy compared to uh the garmin watches don't have a touch screen on their mapping enabled watches so I can't do that as easily you have to kind of use a bunch of button codes which you get used to but uh there we go moving this around like this and you can see that red line is my trail uh, now I'm gonna switch over to some footage out on the trail so you can see what it looks like uh, you can see how it has arrows showing you where I should be going on that particular trail uh, the direction of travel in case I'm doing an out and back of sorts in this case it was a bit of a loopy loop so that's actually pretty handy and you can see my position as well on a particular thing you're not seeing though any trail names there's no names on any of this stuff uh, and there's also no turn by turn directions or reminders so it's purely a breadcrumb trail as I say which means that you're just following this little trail around uh, until you get to off the trail far enough that you get the course deviation alert. Uh, so that's a little different than most other watches that have this sort of functionality do have alerts to say, hey, turn left or turn right. Uh, and that's handy, especially when there's trails, like a bunch of times here, I missed the, the turn because um, there's a trail in, in this particular area had a bunch of like we call moose tracks because there's literally moose there and they go off and you think you're on the trail and then all of a sudden you realize you get the off course alert and you have to, to backtrack. And so that's where it's handy uh, to be able to have that turn left and turn right. And some cases uh, to be able to, to notify of the upcoming turn. There is no labels I mentioned, so you're not going to see pond names or trail names or anything like that. That's not in the map set uh, at this point in time. Uh, so to get out of this little menu, I would tap it again, and you can see now it will go ahead and allows me to scroll between the different data pages. Uh, you can see my elevation, upcoming, uh, distance, and again, all these pages are customizable. Uh, one thing to note is that right now you cannot see the map uh, as a data page unless you're routing with it. Uh, the exception to that though is you can always hold down this lower right hand button here and go to the map this way instead. And that allows you to see it. Uh, but if you're just go off and do a run and you want to add the map data page, it's not there today. Chorus is saying or did say they're going to add that down the road, which is pretty handy. Just if you don't want to always load a route every time because the routes are so cumbersome to load uh, that you can access the map page more easily than digging through the toolbox. Uh, so let me just uh, 
back out of that. You can see running power, training load. Again, these pages are all customizable. Uh, and if I scroll through each one of those, uh, I'm back to the map page itself. Now, from a sports standpoint, these all more or less work the same way with exception of the differences per sport. So you saw running power right there. Uh, and if I tap here uh, on that page, if I tap on any other page, uh, so I'm going to end the workout. There we go. Uh, I can go finish. And then we'll end this. Uh, I'm going to throw this one away and I'll show you the details of a workout that I've done. So we go to history down here in this little sport list. Down, 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 down. History, boom. Here we go. Let me find my run. Uh, this one, there's some other better ones that have a bit more elevation edge. Um, this one here, I think, is it. Uh, so this is one that I did a uh, trail run slash hike sort of thing uh, a couple weeks ago. And you can see as I scroll through this, so here's the main page, you see the, the outline of the trail map, uh, the total time, uh, and then down we go. You can see the training load information from that. Now keep in mind with the Chorus watch, the training load requires that you do some flat running first. Uh, even if you're a cyclist, you still have to run or a windsurfer, yep, you still gotta run. Uh, and then from there, you'll get the heart rate driven training load. Uh, though it can be a bit funky in some cases for some of the prediction stuff around, uh, you know, like marathon pace. If you're doing hilly terrain, it's not, it doesn't really account for that. So uh, like my most recent flat run was all the way back on July 25th. Uh, otherwise I've been always in the mountains the last few weeks. And so therefore, uh, I'm not getting some of the details I would expect because it doesn't account for the mountainous side of it. Um, in any case, we'll scroll on down through this right here. You can see some of the metrics there from Chorus's Evo Lab functionality video on that up in the corner as well. Uh, you can see the best kilometer there, the average pace. This was not a very fast run, of course. Uh, and then going on down, uh, you can see my heart rate. You can see my average power right there. Uh, you can see the elevation gain. Uh, essentially, this was like up 900 meters, so 20... 24, 25, I don't know, 20, a while, like 2,700 feet of uh, climbing just straight up and then straight back down again uh, in a fairly, very short um, distance. You can see my cadence, uh, calories there, almost 2,000 calories, workout time and total time, uh, and the recovery time of one day until full recovery. Uh, and then the laps down below, uh, I don't think I had, I guess I had auto laps there. So yeah, auto laps of every one kilometer on that. Uh, so you can set that auto lap up in the settings uh, if you want to as well. So that is history. As I mentioned, like the different sport modes each have different uh, kind of quirks to them, or not quirks, but like features to them. So in open water swimming, I wouldn't get running power, for example. And then if I'm in the different climbing modes, then I would get, uh, you know, climbing related metrics and, and so on. Uh, and now, indoor bike, that's kind of a reminder on this on sensors. And so if I go back here, so indoor bike allows me to pair to sensors and get data, like for example, cadence data or power data. Uh, and one thing to keep in mind with the Vertex 2 is there's no AMP Plus uh, support there, which does doesn't matter for trail runners, uh, climbers, stuff like that, but for cyclists and triathletes, it's actually a pretty big deal. Uh, and so you would go into the accessories menu here, you would add your Bluetooth uh, smart sensors, and that can be a power meter or a trainer, and then you would see it down in the add a list. So you can see there's the camera there, uh, and there's the power meter. Headphones show up in a different section, uh, so these are just the Bluetooth smart like sensor accessories. accessories. Uh, and now, again, from a cyclist standpoint, the problem here is that this isn't supporting the full left-right balance side of it that you would see on a dual power meter. You can see the left side there is paired, but not the right side. And trainers are challenging because unless you have the most recent Wahoo Kicker that has uh, multi-channel Bluetooth smart support, your Zwift app or Trainer Road app or whatever the case may be is going to be taking up that single Bluetooth channel. Therefore, since you can't connect to Ant on this, you can't go ahead and get that data behind the scenes. Uh, so uh, backing out, one of the things I want to mention here is Wi-Fi support. So Wi-Fi they're just using right now for firmware updates. Koros talked about the possibility of adding uh, music later on, so that could be kind of interesting to see how they would do that over Wi-Fi. Uh, my guess is maybe supporting podcasts via Wi-Fi, that would be something pretty cool, um, or as well as maybe just be able to access like a file share locally via Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't expect streaming services to be here, because uh, really none of them are open up at this point uh, just to allow any company to access it. Okay, going back here, I think we've got just about everything. Uh, you know, sensors in here, if you wanted to calibrate the compass or calibrate elevation, uh, so I could do that right now. I could say, hey, enter elevation zero. Okay, there we go, back this way. And we'll put it at one meter elevation. There you go. That's probably pretty close to correct here within a meter or two of where I actually am. Uh, you can pair the phone, accessories I just showed you, Wi Fi, music we saw earlier, uh, more settings. You can do altitude alerts, uh, device info, turn it off, change the language, change the watch face. Uh, so you can see some of the watch faces they have here. But again, you can download way more watch faces from the app and then put them here and change it. Uh, backlight on or off. So just to 
turn this to uh, all day, and you can see that how that brightened up a little bit. Uh, probably should have done that earlier, but just used to having it off uh, is kind of my daily setting there uh, for the most part. Okay. At this point, I think we've gone through everything there is to show you on the user interface standpoint. Hopefully you kind of understand how things work a little bit better and hopefully this was useful to you. Uh, if so, go ahead and whack that like button at the bottom there or hit subscribe. And if you made it this far in the video without like seeing my review video, then uh, you probably should see that too. Cause um, well, you've probably seen it by now. You wouldn't have gone through this whole video and not seen the review video. So with that, thanks for watching and have a good one.